Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome to a very special FNAF news type video. The reason why this video is so special is because we just got a lot of very amazing news on FNAF Plus. If you don't know about FNAF Plus, basically it is a official reimagining of the very first FNAF game. It's being developed by Phil Morg, aka Fiznom, and it is a part of the Fanverse initiative. We just got a huge teaser trailer, it was 13 minutes long, called Breaking and entering. And not too long after the posting of that video, Phil actually went on Twitter and held a Q&A for the game. And we have a lot of stuff to talk about. I won't waste any more time. If you're new here, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Also, maybe hit the like button. And as you can see, I got my Johnny Blocks mug. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. New merchandise on my store right now. And my shirt just came in today. So if you like what you see, Maybe go check out the merch. So let's start off with Kane Carter's tweet because the legend he is supplied us with basically a overall summary of the Q&A. I do have a few more questions and answers that I threw into the video that weren't on Kane's tweet just because I, I thought they were interesting. But first I want to go over Kane's, again, massive tweet. So buckle up, this is going to be a very long, very detailed video. So as you can see, Kane splits the questions up into four different categories. Lore, general, gameplay, and comparisons with FNAF 1. First First up, you have there are some changes from the original game story and timeline. Since there is a lot, I'm not going to spend too much time on each question. Of course, you know, this is a reimagining, so it makes sense that some things are going to be different. A lot of secrets and mysteries from the original FNAF will be expanded upon. It's certainly going to be interesting what story bits Phil decides to expand upon. Since this is technically his reimagining of the first game, he can kind of do whatever he wants, while at the same time kind of staying roughly on script with what he talked about with Scott. Number three, neither Foxy nor the puppet killed the protagonist in breaking and entering. That's interesting, because we always thought that the puppet was going to be on our side in FNAF. And then we saw the trailer for breaking and entering, and we thought we saw the puppet kill whoever perspective we were looking from. The high school kid that went into the pizzeria. So if it wasn't Foxy nor the puppet, who could it be? Moving on to general information number four, Golden Freddy may or may not return. It seems like the question is why would he? I know a lot of people are upset that Golden Freddy might not return into the game, but honestly, if it doesn't make sense for him to be in the game, I'm fine with him not making an appearance. Golden Freddy was an easter egg in the first game, but since Phil has what appears to be a very strict script and plans for the game, if Golden Freddy doesn't fit into it properly, I'd rather just not have him be in it, so we're gonna have to wait and see, is Golden Freddy in FNAF Plus? So far, we don't know. Number five, the animatronics will not have voices. I'm actually happy about this one because I feel like it would be so less creepy if they talked to us. It'll be interesting to see if they make the same groaning or like moaning sounds that they do in FNAF 1 when they're outside of your door. I think having something like that could be cool. Number six, Phone Guy will not return. An alternative has been planned that fans may enjoy. This is something else people are kind of upset about, honestly. I'm a bit upset about it as well, you know, Phone Guy is iconic. I do wonder what this alternative is, is it some sort of hand unit, is it something completely different? Number seven, at least Spanish subtitles are planned for the game, other languages are unconfirmed right now. That's exciting, more languages means more people have the opportunity to play the game, which is always nice. Number eight, Foxy will continue to have pants slash trousers on his design. Number nine, the release of the PC version of FNAF Plus will not rely on the completion of its ports. For some people that might suck in case you don't have a PC, but honestly, I think it's fine. <laughs> Usually with ports, they do come after the initial release of the game. I'm pretty sure it's only Flumpties that is going to release all of them all at once. And also, I mean, it's kind of up to Phil when he decides, all right, I'm going to release the game now, or I'm going to wait for the ports. Number 10, there may be more animatronics that we haven't seen yet. That's certainly interesting because we do have the four main ones, you know, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. We also have the puppet, so who else could we get? Springtrap, maybe? I don't know, Balloon Boy maybe? We're gonna learn about him in a quick second. 11, the jump scares will feel like they are actually happening inside an office rather than being overlays. So I'm assuming some sort of effects like an echo or a reverb are gonna be in place. Number 12, the game will feature an intro screen. Number 13, there are no Pork Chops horror show Easter eggs. Pork Chops is another game by Phil. Number 14, there are more currently unseen references to other FNAF games. Right, we've seen in the office there's a puppet mask and a balloon 
Balloon Boy figure. And we've also seen some drawings of the Fazbear Fright books. Number 15, Balloon Boy is not in FNAF Plus. I know a lot of people are happy about that because apparently everybody hates Balloon Boy, but I kind of want to know what he was going to look like, you know, in the whole FNAF Plus style. Number 16, songs other than Goodbye to Spring and Follow Me have been considered for FNAF Plus videos and trailers. So Phil actually said that number 6, Breaking and Entering, was the final teaser video, so I'm kind of unclear why this was thrown in there. Maybe, you know, those songs going to be used in the game itself. I don't know. Number 17, no animatronics are planned outside of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and the Puppet, because more would crowd the gameplay, and that is in quotation marks, and that's very important. Putting on my glasses here, because I, I need to seem smart about this. So Phil said that there may be more animatronics, but he also said that we're not going to get any more in the gameplay itself. So there's two things to take away. Number one, I'm pretty sure this confirms that Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and the puppet will have mechanics. Right, if the puppet is grouped into, oh, you know, more would crowd the gameplay, it makes it seem like the puppet is going to have some sort of mechanic that we need to watch out for in the game. And number two, we might see more animatronics, but they will not affect the gameplay. I'm not sure where they could show up, maybe as easter eggs, maybe in cutscenes or something, I don't know. But if they do show up, or when they show up, they will not affect the rest of the gameplay. Number 18, the story will be somewhat self-contained, aka there will not be any cliffhangers. That's cool to know, again, this is Phil's story, you know, this is his interpretation of the story of FNAF. So like I said earlier, he can kind of do what he wants with his story. And continuing off of that, number 19, Phil is, quote, not opposed to contributing more fan games to the initiative. So if Scott or whoever is taking control of FNAF after Scott says, hey, Phil, want to make a, you know, FNAF 2 plus? Phil wouldn't be opposed to it, but he also can't go out and say, all right, I had so much fun with FNAF 1 plus time to move on to FNAF 2 plus or FNAF 3 plus. He can't do that. It's kind of up to whoever is in charge. Moving on to gameplay mechanics are not faithful to the original game, but the style and spirit will be inspired by it. Again, this is something else people are upset about for some reason. I kind of like the introduction of brand new mechanics. You know, if I wanted to have the FNAF 1 mechanics, I would just play FNAF 1. 21, the game's mechanics will change somewhat in a way that is familiar, but more frightening. So yeah, it's keeping kind of the same baseline. Again, like Phil said, the same style, the same spirit, but he's changing it to fit the atmosphere of the brand new game. The ghost detector from breaking and entering will play a role in the gameplay, though it isn't very important. Even if it's not important, that is amazing. It's so interesting, I can't wait to see what role it has in the game, again, even if it's not that important. Number 23, a classic mode, bringing some sound effects and UI from the original game is being considered. So everybody that's upset that it's slightly different than FNAF, there you go, classic mode. I think Phil was talking about having the original jump scare sound in the classic mode, which is a nice little touch for fans. 24, the game will not have any mini games. 25, there are no cutscenes between the nights. I could be reading into this, but he does only say between the nights. So could we see some cutscenes at the end of the game, at the start of the game? Honestly, Phil did such a great job with the teaser trailers, especially breaking and entering, that I would love to see some sort of cutscenes, but if there's no cutscenes, you know, I can't change that. 26, the campaign will likely only be five nights long. So no six night, though there will be a cut custom night, as we're going to talk about in a little bit. 27, Foxy will run down the hallway like in FNAF 1. We did see what I assumed to be Foxy in the same hallway in Breaking and Entering. He was kind of just standing there, though. I don't know if he's going to be like that in the game, or if that was just for Breaking and Entering. Number 28, there was no free roam mode. And the gameplay involves no movement. You will always be in the office. Honestly, I'm a little saddened by this fact, but again, that would be a huge undertaking by Phil. It would be really cool to walk around the place like what we saw in Breaking and Entering, but again, I can completely understand that that would be a lot of effort. 29, it is planned to be the same length as the original FNAF, but with plenty of post-game features. So it seems like we're going to get a lot of bonus features once we beat the campaign mode of the game right the first five nights at Freddy's. Which is cool, I always like bonus uh, content, especially in FNAF, because the games don't really have a whole lot of replay value. Number 30, there is a custom night with three bonus modes planned for the game. One is particularly special, so I'm assuming that these modes are the bonus post-game content. And apparently one is very special, so we're gonna have to wait and see what that is all about. The game does not have a set 420 mode or anything similar. No 420 mode, yet there's a custom night. 
I don't really get why that's the case, but <laughs> okay. So I'm assuming that this means there's no custom challenges, like ladies night or bottom shelf, you know, the cupcake challenge, all those, you know, challenges in the custom nights. There are plans for a wide variety of control options, for example, mouse only, keyboard only, and controller only. There will be behind the scenes content in the extras menu. So it seems like more bonus stuff. Once you beat the game, you actually get a extras menu. We've had that in a few FNAF games and they've been uh, pretty cool cool, actually. Getting to see all the jump scares and some, again, behind-the-scenes things. Full body renders of all the characters. Number 34, you can select the kitchen camera, and you can hear things. Whether it's visible or not is unconfirmed. So if you don't know, the kitchen camera in FNAF 1 is always disabled. And it seems like in FNAF Plus, much like FNAF 1, you can hear things in the kitchen, though, again, we don't know if we can see anything. Number 35, it may be impossible to distinguish who beats the horror hardest challenge in FNAF Plus. So maybe there are challenges, or maybe they're just talking about all max mode in the custom night, which is confirmed. I don't know, I'm starting to get a little bit confused. Number 36, we will not see any gameplay footage soon. Though we do know that Phil does plan on releasing a gameplay trailer of sorts before the game. He talked about that once he announced breaking and entering. FNAF Plus is definitely more difficult than FNAF 1. That's interesting. But it also makes sense, right? It seems like there's more going Going on a lot of different mechanics, a lot of brand new mechanics. Moving on to the final section, comparisons with FNAF 1. It is likely that the animatronics will be animated when on camera, as hinted by the Cam 10 teaser. I'm super happy about this, because as I mentioned, Phil did an amazing job on the animations and breaking and entering. And it's also going to be a lot more terrifying. FNAF Plus is planned to be more intense and frightening than the original FNAF. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> 40, there are as many endings in FNAF Plus as there are in FNAF 1. This one's still trying to figure out because in FNAF 1 there's only one ending you know you get the paychecks unless they're getting technical and saying that endings are beating FNAF you know night 5 6 and 7 so in that case 3 but I don't know, maybe you guys know, maybe I'm just stupid. And finally, FNAF Plus will certainly be darker than the original. And again, that's something else Phil talked about during the reveal of breaking and entering. Oh boy, so that was Kane's tweet. Very detailed, very insane. Thank you, Kane, for putting that together. And so now I want to quickly go through some other questions and answers that I came across that I thought were interesting. How hard was it to design the animatronics? Phil said Freddy took like 15 versions slash revisions to get right. Bonnie came out perfectly as I wanted him to be out of the oven. Chica took a bit less time than Freddy, so it seems like Chica also took quite a few attempts. And then Foxy only had two major revisions, of which he picked the best one. And then Phil made a few jokes about Springtrap and Afton appearing in the game. Someone said is Afton withering away in the walls. Phil jokingly replying and saying yes, and then he'll burst out of the safe room on night seven, and then power bomb the night guard through the table. He also said in a different reply, Springtrap will burst out of the safe room with a gun on night seven. I'm assuming he's joking, right? He did say it's gonna be darker, but I don't know if Scott would allow a gun in Springtrap's hand, so I'm assuming that this is all for the jokes. If you were given the opportunity to make any kind of merchandise you want for a plus, what would you choose? Phil said a ghost detector mp3 player slash radio containing songs used throughout the FNAF franchise, bobbleheads for the main cast, FNAF plus celebrate poster, and the cupcake hand puppet. Of course, this is all Phil's idea. None of this is confirmed, though I would say a lot of the stuff I would love to see, especially the cupcake hand puppet, That'd be so cool. I also found a bit more info about Phone Guy. In the same reply that Kane talked about in his post, Phil says, It was not my choice to make, it was Scott's. So as we heard previously, Scott was going to voice Phone Guy. But he ultimately turned it down, and that's when we got news that he would not be voicing Phone Guy, neither would Phil himself. So it seems like it went from Scott was gonna voice Phone Guy, to Scott's not gonna voice Phone Guy, to if Scott's not voicing Phone Guy, Phone Guy's not gonna be in the game. Or at least that's my understanding of it, right? It seems like if Scott was not gonna voice him, he wouldn't want Phone Guy in the game. But again, it is interesting to see what this alternative to Phone Guy is gonna be in the game. Also, just doubling down here that apparently Click Team is still set to port the games to mobile and consoles. Just in case you guys had doubts, someone said, Will we get a full reveal of Foxy through a teaser or a trailer, or do we have to wait until the game comes out? And then Phil said, Wait until the game comes out. So it seems like we're not gonna get a full look of Foxy until the game is out, which honestly gets me 
a bit more hyped about Foxy, his design, and also the game. Someone else said, will I be able to honk the nose in this remake? And then Phil said, I think the fandom would get me alive if that wasn't the case. Honestly, this is the best news I've heard all goddamn day. Will you ever make any behind the scenes images just like Scott did back in 2016, 2017? So this isn't talking about the extras menu, which already has been confirmed. On the anniversaries of FNAF back in the day, Scott used to post again behind the scenes images of the characters. And Phil said maybe. If that is the case, that'd be really cool to see. Will there be any new Easter eggs in FNAF Plus? Phil said there's plans for some new ones. Talking a little bit about the release of the game. Of course, that's not confirmed. I'm pretty sure Phil isn't even throwing out ideas for a release date. But when asked about it, Phil did say after the game is done, I'd have to coordinate a release with Scott. Don't know how long that process will take. The game's also being made in Game Maker Studio 2. I think we already knew that, but just in case you didn't, there it is. How long have you been working on FNAF Plus? He said like a year. This is interesting. Was the body in Freddy in breaking and entering the night guard? And how long had he been in there? And Phil said he had a bad night. So maybe I've missed something? But this confirms that the body in Freddy was a night guard. Someone asked about any discarded ideas for the designs of the characters. Bill said, tried out actual fur particles didn't look right. I want to see that. I really hope that we're going to see that in the extras menu because that would be hilarious. And then once again, Phil joking presumably about Springtrap bursting out of the safe room on night 7. A bit more info about Balloon Boy. Phil said, I was debating for a really long time whether or not Balloon Boy could have walked in the game. He does not. He's too different from the rest of the cast. So even though Balloon Boy's not in the game, it seems like Phil was heavily considering having him in. Someone asked, will the office have Halloween decorations when playing during October 31st like the original game? Phil said, no. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> How long did it take to make the models? Phil said a few months. A bit of info about the ideas behind the redesigns for the characters. Freddy should be mostly the same, just with added details. Bonnie needed some kind of uncanny creepy characteristics. Chica needed to look chaotic and in despair. And then Foxy should be threatening. That is super interesting. Will pressing CD plus skip the night like it did in the original? Phil said no. Kinda sucks because that is a FNAF classic trick. And then finally some scrapped titles for the game itself before it was officially FNAF Plus. Phil made a tweet earlier in the month with a very short list of early names. FNAF 1.5, FNAF Recorded, or FNAF Rec, and then FNAF Red, which I'm not sure exactly what that means. And then he also had a bit more info about why they were scrapped. He said FNAF 1.5 might have implied the game took place between or was a combination of FNAF 1 and 2, while Rec and Red sounded more like spin-off titles. And that is all of the FNAF Plus news I have have for you guys today. A lot of info. I still haven't even talked about all the secrets and breaking and entering. I'll get around to that eventually. But this was a long video, but again, there was a whole lot of info to go through, so thank you guys so much for watching all the way through. And I'll see you all very soon for some more FNAF news, because we've been getting a lot recently. Goodbye.